This video is sponsored by Linode. Use the link in the description to get your $100 60 day credit. Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is looking at Peppermint OS. It's been a long time since there has been a release and there has been a lot of changes and new features. So just gonna go over here, download Peppermint and let's go ahead and save this file. Save it out. How long is this gonna take us? Ooh, they got a quick server. Sweet deal. And we're gonna be throwing this into a, a just a little virtual machine here so we could go ahead and uh, check it out. Peppermint, Linux, Ubuntu. It is no longer Ubuntu. We're gonna switch this to Debian 64-bit. Next, it's uh, Peppermint is a lightweight Linux distribution. That's one of the main things about it. It doesn't have very much uh, pre-included software. As a matter of fact, with this latest release, it doesn't even include a web browser. You can see right here, no web browser is, is installed. You can choose using their Welcome to Peppermint prompt. So that's just something to keep note of. If you're looking for a lightweightness, this is a good move. Uh, I'm still gonna give it about four gigabytes of RAM just so we can uh, see it in its full potential. Let's create a new disk. 32 gigs is probably more than enough. And there we go. Let's check up on our download. It slowed down. I always forget to turn on these LED lights. Let there be light. All right, so it looks like our download is complete. Let's go ahead and fire this guy up real quick. Beep, beep, beep. Peppermint, we're not gonna go utilities. Somebody's probably gonna ask, right now the main distribution I'm currently running is KDE Neon. Uh, I've been playing around with this for a couple weeks and uh, it's a very good experience. This is the uh, testing branch. So I have the latest version of Plasma. Uh, be ready on the 8th, I think it releases and I uh, should be coming out with the video as well. So here's this, let's uh, fix this resolution and go full screen on this guy. Okay, so that's the wrong thing. I don't use XFCE that much. 1080p an option. Oh, it's not there. View, ah, oh, here, we're gonna have it zoomed in for a minute. Window, do, 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 do. All right, here we go. We are now in Peppermint. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and ignore this for now. And let's just go ahead and install Peppermint. Another change, instead of going with the Ubuntu installer, due to the fact that they've switched away from Ubuntu, we are now rocking Calamaris within Peppermint. So next, 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 erase, next. Brandon Hopkins. Peppermint's a little uh, spicy. And next, summary looks good to me. Let's go ahead and install that. And here we go. We have some uh, little slideshow things here. So changes to expect in Peppermint. Uh, H block replaces advert blocker, uh, new Peppermint hub. So some of the things we talked about, it's cool that they have uh, are giving us updates in here. Ooh, we got some, uh, some file manager choices. Debian is the new base. All right, sweet deal. The installation is complete, done, and it's gonna reboot. But before we reboot our system, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Like I said, use the link for that $100 60 day credit. Linode is fantastic for hosting your Linux services, whether that be your personal programming projects, chat servers, they have a whole bunch of one-click installers that you can see here. You go ahead and just click one of these, do some simple configuration and have it up and running. They have new NVMe block storage options if that's something you're interested. Overall, it is a wonderful company. I've been using them for quite some time. So again, check out the link below to get that credit. All right, it's booting it. Look, I done goofed that we got a capital O. All right, we're gonna need to go ahead and get some uh, virtual box drivers. All right, there we go, we got 1080p. So now let's go ahead and actually check out this distro here. This is one of the new things we have. Welcome to Peppermint, welcome to Peppermint OS. Hope you enjoy everything you need and nothing that you do not. Perfect. So first things first, let's go ahead and use this to grab a web browser. So let's give this a click. It's asking for our password. And now here it says select your software packages. We can see we've got some nice transparency here. It's kind of weird, but uh, I'm digging it. Uh, software, what do we need here? I'm not gonna select any of this. We have the Meta Calculator or Mate Calculator. Uh, we have Flatpak Packages Platform, so it doesn't include anything. We have GNOME Software Store, uh, but we have a really easy selection of things to go ahead and help us out. Uh, we want Firefox, sure. Let's, uh, let, let's just stick with that for now. So install selected. There we go, we got our little terminal window here. Since we already inputted our password, we're not going to need to. And done. So close that out, and now, theoretically, 
we should have Firefox on our system. It's Firefox ESR. So if we go over here, let's go ahead and find the version number. So about Firefox, this is version 78. So it's a little behind, but again, this is Debian. I did run an update a bit earlier and it looked like it was using some of the unstable repositories, like there's a mix but I'm not 100% sure on that. So close this out here. Let's check out the pre-installed software. There's really not too much, so this shouldn't take too long. So under all applications, being that this is XFCE, we're gonna have a lot of different XFCE type applications. So that's a lot of what these are. We have GNOME disks in here, as well as uh, files, which is, this is Nautilus. Uh, Gparted is installed. We have the uh, GDEB package manager to go ahead and easily install uh, Deb, Deb or Debian packages. So if I go file, open, I could probably open up Deb files dot Deb through there. So now go down here, we have icon, mail, reader. We have the peppermint hub, which we're about to dive into. We have our basic XFCE uh, settings and configuration options. We have our terminal emulator here. It does look like it includes a web browser. So if I hit web browser here, Oh, this is Firefox. So it just recognized that that's my web browser. I was thinking it was going to open up like GNOME web or something. Uh, welcome to Peppermint, Window Manager, and more XFC settings. So really not a lot, but it's really easy to go and get really whatever you would like. Peppermint extras. This, from what I've been told, is theming and whatnot. Peppermint used to come with a lot of different wallpapers, themes, and uh, stuff like that. But if I go over here and I go to desktop settings, you can see there's really not much going on in the way of backgrounds. And if I uh, go into the settings here and I open up appearance, there's really not much going in the way either. We have our peppermint red dark, which by the way is a beautiful XFCE theme. I really love what they've done with the color schemings, the branding and everything like that. Icons, not much, fonts, normal. And we have some settings here. Let's go ahead and grab these peppermint extras. So here we have themes, icons, and wallpaper. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of everything. So you can see by installing the themes, the following will be applied, which is a much larger list than what we just saw. So let's go ahead and install that, uh, give that a check and install. So now it's gonna go ahead and put in all of those different themes. And then we go ahead and close this out. Let's cancel out of here. Let's go ahead and grab the icons and then the wallpapers. Ooh, this one wants a password. There we go, cancel that out, cancel, and wallpapers. So for wallpapers, we're gonna add an additional 47 images, let's go for it. All right, so we got all those. Before I go ahead and close out this uh, Welcome to Peppermint prompt, we have uh, tutorials, uh, open Pep Hub, and of course they have the release notes and link to their community stuff. So now let's go ahead and go to desktop settings, and then here let's change the folder to backgrounds maybe. Yeah, here it is. These are all the other Peppermint OS backgrounds and wallpapers in addition just to this uh, basic gray and what's pre-included. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and apply one of these. That looks super cool. Let's just go for it. And if we head over to appearance where we just were, you are gonna see a plethora. Is that the right word? Why can't I move this? There we go. A whole bunch of different themes. So here you can see all the new arc, all the new peppermints. So if I didn't like the red dark, I could go like, Red mixed, sand, pink dark, which honestly that looks really cool. And a whole bunch of other different color schemes and whatnot. So they don't include it, but they give you the option to have more options. I'm gonna switch it back to red dark for now and close this out. So from there, let's go ahead and check out the pep hub. And it looks like this is just like links to other things, just like things that you'd use more frequently. So like if I open up a panel, this is probably just gonna open up the normal XFCE panel settings. And here, if you've used XFCE before, you're pretty familiar with the uh, customization options. It's actually fairly customizable for uh, how lightweight it is. And then of course we have a DOMF or DCONF editor, uh, notification settings, regular settings. Uh, yeah, this is just XFC stuff. We go to network and hardware. Basically what they've done is instead of like going to settings here, a lot of these are just in here, it seems like. So like power manager, for example, if I open that up through here, power manager, we're gonna open up through here, power manager. And then over here we have a uh, system and software. If I go over to select packages, let's check this out. What application is this? Oh, this is just the, what we opened with the welcome prompt. I don't know, not too exciting. But also it's not supposed to be, that's kind of the point. If I go ahead and open up FlatHub, it's just a web browser link. So yeah, other than that, there's really not much to this. It's basically Debian with XFCE. If 
that's what you're looking for. You can't go wrong. So this is lightweight. So let's see if they have HTOP on here. Is HTOP pre-installed? It's not BTOP? No. So they're really light on what's going on here. Task manager, you can't go wrong. CPU usage, it's moving around because I'm moving things around. I didn't up my core counts or anything like that, but you can see the default memory is 1.2 gigabytes of RAM. Um, this isn't on boot, that seems kind of high. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the system actually. And we're back, fresh on boot. So it's under a gig, so that did help a little bit, but uh, not as low as I was thinking it would be. Generally, most people have at least four gigabytes in their computers now, so it's not too big of a deal. I was thinking it would have been closer to like five or 600 megabytes, but it's not too important, I guess. Uh, their default setup of XFCE, you've kind of seen how their uh, menu's looking. We have some favorited icons down here. If I click this, we can see what else is going up. We have the Synaptic Package Manager, which is wonderful for uh, Debian and really any Ubuntu-based operating system. Uh, text editor, some power stuff, the run program prompt right here, application finder. We have our little workspace switcher down here. Uh, right here, we could go ahead and run updates. So if I wanted to run an update, uh, and I can actually show you, you can see right here we have uh, back ports, unstable, but the hit one is in release. Nothing to update because I've already done that. But yeah, that, that's really about it. Very lightweight system, it runs good. The For XFCE, the theming is absolutely beautiful. This is something I can see myself throwing like an old ThinkPad T420 or something like that and having it just run absolutely fantastic. Uh, with all that, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. And thank you, you personally, for watching this video. It means the world to me. And if you did like it, make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any future content. With all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.